Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. How wonderful to be with you today. It's a good day in Florida. I hope it's a good day where you are. And my friend, I think we have a really special program for you today. But before I get into that, I want to welcome you. I, I say it every day, but I am conscious of the fact that the Lord gives us brand new viewers every day. And I want you to know you're special. And then those regular ones, you know, earlier today I was in my office reading some of the most precious mail. Wanda and I were just pouring over it and so thankful for you wonderful folks who uh, you send offerings, but also you take time to write notes of appreciation. And I want you to know we appreciate you in return. My guest today is very special. Uh, perhaps one of my very favorite writers, his name is Gene Edwards. Uh, his name is really legendary in, in the Christian world, certainly, of writing. And his books have had uh, an impact on my life. And I want to discuss some of those with him, you know, individually. So I'm not going to tell you what they are right now. I am going to tell you, we're going to talk about his newest book called Stories I Love to Tell. There's nothing like this out there. And I'll give you just a little suggestion before he joins me. And that is go buy a whole case of these and have them ready to give out for gifts. There's nothing quite on the market like this book. So I will talk to him about that. But before I do, uh, Stephanie and her friend have made some beautiful, beautiful crafts. And this one's called a chalk couture. So uh, take a look while they show you how to make something very artsy. Stephanie? It is another great day at Homekeepers because we've brought Brandy back and she has some amazing new products. She's going to tell us about her company. She's going to tell us about the products and she's going to show us how to make something amazing at home that you can order. Okay, <laughs> so Brandy, tell us what you have. Yes. Okay, so I am with Maker Made Co. That's my business, um, but I also am an independent designer with Chalk Couture. So I use their Chalkology paste and their inks to create a lot of my work and also put together bundles so that makers like you can get those things and do them at home yourself. So, which I am super excited yes. about. Look at this picture. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you can make all kinds of different things. I'm making gifts. I've already decided. <laughs> so since Mother's Day is coming up, I thought it would be fun to make a little kitchen towel, tea towel, um, with one of our transfers, Mama's Kitchen. Um, super easy to do. We have reusable silk screen transfers. So that means you can get at eight to 10 uses out of one transfer. Reusable, so, that yes. means so much to me. So people so like cheap. you who love gift making, <laughs> hey, that is great. Um, okay, so you just take your transfer, you put it down on your surface. In this case, I am using the um, a cotton, just a cotton towel. Mm -hmm. Now when we're using inks, we do have a backing that you wanna make sure you're putting behind. Obviously you don't want your Sinks inks are, to be going yeah. through, okay? So it's very simple, you just push down. Our backings are very sticky. You can get them right on there, make sure it's good there. Okay, so I'm going to use our Coral Color, color Chalk Couture um, ink. So there's ink and there's paste. There's there paste is. you would use like on chalkboards or different wood and things like that. And there's ink that you could use on Oops, sorry. cloth and I'm sure a million yes. other things. Oh, I don't know everything. Bakeware, it, glassware, anything that can be heat set, you can actually put ink on and make it permanent. So um, you just get some of your ink on your squeegee here. Look at that Scrape color. That's it. Amazing. Isn't it beautiful? It's so pretty for spring. I love it. Very nice. I've made so many things with this coral color already. Mother's Day is coming. It is. It is. And <laughs> I'm going to be putting together some awesome bundles for my peeps so that See, they that, can do stuff like this. that's what I like love this. too because I'm simple. Just tell me what to buy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go through everything to see exactly. what I want to buy. I just exactly. want you to tell me. <laughs> so you get your, your um, ink on there. You keep all of your excess so you can save it for the next project, mm -hmm. okay? So your your ink and your paste oh goes a long goodness. way. Look and look how perfect that is. Beautiful. I know. So we're going to put yep. this on there yep. too? I thought we can throw on so. some baking spoons there. So I can play too. You can. Have at it's it. It's so easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. So just line it up so however you want up. it. We're going to use a shimmer gold. Now that's one Come thing about on. the inks that are over the paste. We have shimmer colors. So I love it. It's beautiful. The gold, the copper, and the silver. All right. You just take so, a little bit of your ink. See, I could just spread this it is around. so therapeutic to me. I could sit for hours at home mm -hmm. and just I know you don't have time like that at oh, home, but I'm sure please. you sit. I do. <laughs> and just 
Now the inks are not as forgiving, so make sure you stay within your transfer. Um, okay. Pastes can actually wipe right off with okay, water so. on your surfaces, so just you want to be extra, extra careful on your edges. Okay. You just scrape it, get a nice thin layer on there, covering all of that silk screen um, surface. Yep. Perfect. This is my therapy That's today. It. And you'll just peel that right up. Okay, there you there go. There you go, I'll take that. This is so much fun. <laughs> So and it's so easy and so fast. easy and affordable. I'll say that yeah. I looked there up the go. prices because I was like, <laughs> I'm always worried about prices. You know, I me. know I don't want to take it off the backing because I don't want the ink to seep through. But look, at I mean, how it's very easy. Is. And to set this permanently, you just iron it four minutes on each side and you can throw it in the wash and it's not going anywhere. It's that completely permanent. Insane. Look I know. How cute. Now, mom I would love, love that, that, right? So much. Well, you know, mom would love anything that their babies make. That's true. Even it's if true. their baby is 50 years old <laughs> and I'm making one for my mama. No, I know. <laughs> Perfect. So. Those are always the best gifts. So fun, so easy, so fast. Oh my gosh. You make it in minutes. Reusable. And that's it. Yes. Reusable. That's what I love. And mm -hmm. you're, you're not wasting a lot. Nope. You're scraping. You're... That goes a long way. You saw how little bit yeah. we used of that. I mean, and that'll last you a long affordable. time. It's That's what I'm super excited about. We are so happy to have. Have you. Thank Thanks you, Stephanie. I appreciate it. All of her information is going to be up on the screen. Please check it out. Get some stuff. Mm -hmm. Get some people. Get some ladies together. I know. And have you know ha invite them over yep. and be hospitable and do just your own create and take fun. at home. It'll yes. be so fun. So, so fun. check out her website. Check out our uh, Facebook page, and mm -hmm. we'll check you out next time. Thanks to Stephanie and Brandy, what great work they do. And at the top of the show, I mentioned I am so very happy to bring to the Homekeepers viewers, Jean Edwards, author, pastor, evangelist, missionary, all the above. I gotta tell you a story, Jean. Okay, what story? Okay, you'll like this story. I bet it's been 25 years ago that I flew to Boca Raton, I think it's uh, Labor Day, okay. at, to spend with family. I'm sitting on their couch and on the lamp table is a book titled Tale of Three Kings. I picked it up and started to read it. I didn't talk to anybody all weekend. <laughs> I was a horrible guest. I kept my nose in that book. I read it on the plane and that was my introduction to you. And I have given that book to so many people. Earthling, and now I can thank you for it. Well, I'm... I'm I'm stunned, and thank you so much. Oh, okay, we'll get to your books in a minute. Let's go to the, uh, the beginning. Your dad was an oil field worker in Louisiana. That is correct. That's got to be the hardest job in the world, I would think. It's the most dangerous. It's and uh, yes, on, uh, my father couldn't neither read nor write nor back an envelope on the day I was born. I remember the last days of my life, of his life, people calling him from Saudi Arabia, asking him for wisdom and uh, fix it because of men who had doctor's degree in petroleum engineering and he would be giving them advice. It was very brilliant. As I, as I, what I know about your life and your mother also, Yes. Um, you're kind of a miracle family and that your mother was very, very brilliant but had little opportunity. None. But she would grab education where, anywhere she could get it. That's right. Yeah. Um, I tell you, Arthleen, there, now that I myself am older than either of my parents, I sometimes wonder who I am outside <laughs> of my mother and father. They have been, and I didn't feel that way when I was young. I was not feeling that's my father's influence, my mother's. But today, I, I feel like, well, most of me is mother. The rest of me is dad. And there's so much gratitude in my life. Yes. Uh, incredible. Well, when, when you just look at this, 
the stats, what chance would you have had to have the education that you have? Weren't you in college when you were like 15 or something like that? I enrolled in college at 15, that is correct. That's, of course, I owe to my mother, mm -hmm. who was just a woman who loved literature. I, uh, there's nobody else like me in my family. <laughs> I, I, am, I am what I am. Everyone else has lived a pretty mundane life. No matter which part of the tree you go up, and there's Jean, who has just had, I've had one of the most remarkable lives a human Absolutely. could ever hope to How many read. books have you written? I think 33. Uh, have you ever written just a biography? An autobiography. I won't let anybody do that. Uh, I'm hoping to re have one written and released after I'm dead. I have a lot to say, especially to ministers, and I don't really want to have to put up with the foolishness <laughs> that's going to come when I express some of my feelings. Uh, yeah. I think your life is making a good movie, to be honest <laughs> with you. Okay, um, let's see. How as a book termed a classic, is it by the numbers they sell or? No, it's not. Uh, one of the latest, last big mega seller books, I don't even know what it is, but there's uh, the uh, Purpose Driven Life, there's the old, the one over the mall, it's uh, the late great planet Earth. Now these songs, those books will go up uh, like the, the shack. Mm -hmm. Just unbelievably. But if you went to a bookstore today to buy Left Behind, uh, they wouldn't have a stock. They'd have mm -hmm. to order it. So it's gone. That's not a classic. Mm -hmm. A classic is usually considered a book that when it's published, it does this. Or sometimes they do mm -hmm. this, but that's only C.S. Lewis. About this high. Mm -hmm. But then it <laughs> never stops selling right there, now and forever. I get a royalty check every four months, and Helen and I sit down there often and guess how much it will be. We're never over $500 off. <laughs> and, okay, would Tale of Three Kings be classic? What about Divine Romance? Divine Romance and a book entitled the Prisoner in the Third Oh, cell. yes, I've read that. Have you? And uh, other than C.S. Lewis, I don't know of any other author who has produced three books. Mm -hmm. I have author authored two other books that do not have my name on them, and I'm not going to tell you what they are, but they are also classics. In will you tell me after we're off the air? <laughs> uh, absolutely, I will tell okay. you off the air what they are. I tell you, will tell you a hint, I'll tell you a whole lot in fact. These books came out 350 years ago and they sold for three, well 250 years. They were still after 250 years the top four best sellers in literature. But nobody ever put them back in modern English. And I could not find one of them anywhere. I don't know if you've ever heard of a, uh, it's a big piece of jelly and you put uh, writings on it with a stencil or something, then you put the sheet of paper on it and then you pull it off and it's got the writing on it. Mm -hmm. I got a copy of that book written like that, a big stack of old, old parchment. Mm -hmm. And the other one's the same way, nobody had ever rewritten mm -hmm. it. And they were spiritual classics. Mm -hmm. And I found out why, nobody understood what, they mm -hmm. couldn't understand what they said. Well, I'm anxious to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anxious to I, learn I about that. I won't tell you now. Okay. But um, they are, today they're back in that steady selling mm -hmm. going on I expect them to last another couple of hundred years. If you've just joined me, I'm talking to author Gene Edwards, and we're going to talk about his newest book here. We're going to get the website up where you can get it, and I'm sure you can get these on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the places that you uh, get books. 
the um, it, this is your newest one. Yes, it just came out. Stories I love to tell. I I, I love the cover. It's That's the most beautiful cover I've ever seen. Yes. It, I don't care if it is mine. It grabbed me. And as I said at the top of the show, what a gift. If you'd buy up a bunch of these Christmas gifts. and every, This is the kind of book that um, has short stories in it. And there are a lot of them you would like to read twice. You know, it's yes. just a book you hang around. Yes. Where would you get the idea for this? Well, actually, uh, Thomas Nelson called me. I never published with them and... Someone said, uh, the, on the other side, we'd like for you to publish a book, Jane. Uh, can you give us one in two months? And I said, no, oh, I can't do that. I said, it takes me at least two, maybe three years to write a book. So see me in three years. And they said, well, there's something you could do. I said, well, I, uh, I could tell some of the most beautiful Christian stories ever told mm -hmm. because I read enormously. I have a library as big as most books, but most colleges have, and um, small colleges. And I said, I'll give it a try. And I sent it out. I picked books, stories, or thing I felt this will change a life. Mm -hmm. This will transform someone. And we're talking about two or three pages for that's story, all, right? That, that's why it's uh, it's a convenient book. You leave it laying around. You you can read one of the stories. You know, in a couple, maybe five minutes. Some of them are amazing. The mm -hmm. one about the man in room fifteen, uh, a girl who stayed in my home for several years. I I knew she was a hopeless situation. I just gave up on her. Today, she is one of the most radiant Christians I've ever known. Uh, you, can't, you can't just ever be sure how a story is going to turn out. I ha one that I have, no one has ever asked me about, the woman who is doing the typing for me on this book, there are only going to be 25 stories. There are now 26. Her daughter came down with cancer of the heart. Oh, my word. Yes. And then... Not sure um, I've ever heard of that. I, I hadn't either. And, and liver. And she asked all of her Christian friends and her church to pray. And she and his wife sat there for a whole day waiting. The two surgeons came in and said at the request of everyone who's in the hospital room, they have asked you to come in the room. Well, I never heard of anything like that in my life. You never see an operating room. No. Walked in and the two doctors said, look, we took these this morning. Your daughter has. <laughs> uh, cancer of the heart and cancer of the liver. They're right there. We want you to see what we have taken just a few moments ago. He said, I know what cancer looks like. I see it every day. I've seen cancer of the heart. I've seen cancer of the liver. And I can guarantee you, your daughter at this moment has no cancer Praise in God. her anywhere. It's giving me goosebumps. Yeah, I could My not. Goodness. This, and that's in this book. That's in that book. And okay. I'm not going to give it all away, but there's also one. Get this. Uh -huh. This is a miracle story. You meet Helen Keller in Jerusalem <laughs> at places. the Garden right. Tomb. Right. Uh, uh, that's in, the, in here, too. There are uh, stories about your uh, wife, your marriage, how? How long have you been married to Helen? Helen and I will be married next month, 64 years. We're headed in for 65 with, with any messy, blessing of God, y'all. Yeah. Amen. And uh, may I just brief overview? Uh, when we were kids, there was a television 
and it was a, had a little bitty screen about that big, do you remember? And it only picked up three stations, ABC, NBC, and then CBS. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a program on there. We had just gotten the wider screens. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were all playing the McCarthy hearing. But they blacked out everybody else. Well, we'd been invited by NBC to be on the morning program entitled Bride and Groom. We were to be married there in front of all mm -hmm. these people. We got there and we were told uh, the day before our wedding that no one will see it except those in the studio, but you will have a film. And I still have that film of our wedding. But the man in Texas who had worked for NBC when he's in charge of it said, I'm pulling the McCarthy hearing. Part of the Senator McCarthy hearings, the right? Senator McCarthy hearing, and Texas is going to see <laughs> that wedding of that married young couple from Texas. Well, the next morning, just before we got to the studio, NBC made a decision to pull off the air the McCarthy hearings, which left only one station and people were so tired of them. Yeah, they were tired. There was nothing else to watch. Yes. And they turned their television sets on that morning and NBC was live with the bride and groom and Helen and I were married. In so you had probably a million people watching you because there wasn't yeah. that many stations. There were 10 million people 10 million. at our wedding. <laughs> According to the Nelson ratings, we blew all the ratings. And it's lasted around. all these years. <laughs> that, that is awesome. It has. I, when did you discover that you had this gift to write? For instance, Tale of Three Kings, Prisoner in the Third Cell. I love that. Prisoner in the Third Cell is about John the Baptist. Um, I kind of hate to tell you. Okay, tell me anyway. All my people are Cajuns. Yes. And most of them just can barely read and write, and they're the biggest liars I ever heard in my life. <laughs> so, like when you were in high school, did you get good grades uh, when you were given a writing assignment? I got almost D minuses all throughout my entire. D minus. D minus because I can't spell. And until this day, I can not spell. Cat is K-A-T. <laughs> and by the way, the word everything, I can't spell anything. I spell anything E-N-E-T-H-E-N-G because that's the way it sounds. And so... So that's the mean you got bad grades. I got terrible grades. Mm -hmm. But I always enjoyed listening to beautiful stories and then retelling them. And then they began to happen to me. And it is, Arthelene, it is unbelievable how many incredible incidents have come in my life. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm in Jerusalem. I am at something called the Garden Tomb, which may be where the Lord was resurrected. It's 6 a.m. and Helen Keller is in that tomb. Mm -hmm. And the sun breaks over just as she steps out of the tomb mm -hmm. with her face flushed in tears. Who's ever met Helen Keller? Yes, and true. to meet her in one of the most enrapturing moments mm -hmm. of her life. It's a, it, the story is just mm -hmm. unbelievable. And it, it's, it's in this book. We're not going to tell it's all of it. It's number two. It's in this book. Right. Um, did you have a hard time? Uh, did, what did you do? Make a list of stories, and you maybe had maybe had to cut some really good ones. I had to. For, I had to leave some of them out. Uh, would you like to hear th three stories I didn't put in there? My wife told me not to do this. Oh, okay. And it was just. Can all, you do it in one minute? <laughs> no, it's just me and Billy Graham, me and John Kennedy, and when I had breakfast with Jen, Jean, with President Kennedy and Billy Graham. And uh, I left them okay, out that, because there's no point to them. <laughs> that's the stories I love to tell part two. <laughs> yeah, it'll be part two. I, I think there's another one. Uh, you've always been a uh, very devout churchman, uh, pastor, and you've planted churches and all this. How did you meet the Lord? 
face to face. It, it wasn't Paul of Tarsus, but it came close. I drove out to a cemetery to be alone. I fell over into the back seat of my car face down. And I said, if you are real, prove it. I didn't know that anything would happen, and I sure didn't expect this. And I've never and never will tell the experience. But my daughter just recently said, Daddy, what happened? And I said, I drowned in a river of love. Wow. I could hardly move around, talk sensibly for three weeks. It was so unbelievable. So I hit the ground running after that moment. It's one thing to be a Christian. It's another one to have an encounter like this. I have... I'm going to make a statement that probably some of your people will not understand. I think I know the New Testament as well as any man living on this earth. But it's never been the New Testament. It's never been Scripture. It has been Christ. And when I read the Scripture, it's Christ. When I speak, it's Christ. When I, whatever I do, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. I know him as an indwelling Lord. I don't know him as a, somebody who might be in yes. me or living in me. I know him. Thank you for that awesome story, and I do not doubt one bit of it. Uh, we are out of time, but let me remind you again this wonderful book. As I said at the top of the show, one of my all-time favorite writers, and I'm honored and very pleased to have him with me today. We've had the website up on the screen. I certainly encourage you to um, get a copy. You're going to be blessed. And I just pray that some of the things that were said today are really going to take root in your life. Jesus is real. You Amen. can have an encounter with him. Think about that, friend. And please remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 